in this video, I will show you how to go from zero to a thousand customers. Hi everyone, my name is Manav and I've started a bunch of companies that have gone from zero to one just by testing a bunch of marketing techniques. And in this video, I will give you a lot of actionable steps to get your first thousand users and to reach that $1 million mark in revenue. It's hard, like a lot of people quit before reaching that goal. And I really wanna give people a lot of actionable steps and actually tell you guys whatever I have learned because I hate to see people like quitting on their dreams and like never scaling their product. This is completely free masterclass and I will keep making more videos like this because I love telling people what I've learned. I love helping people. I love educating people. So 99.8% of you are not subscribed to my channel. So please, if you can hit that subscribe button, I would really appreciate that. In this video, we will cover 12 pillars of growth. So I'm going to talk about emails, I'm going to talk about micro influencers. I'm going to talk about referral marketing. I'm going to talk about ad. I'm going to talk about word of mouth and existing users, marketplaces, podcasts and newsletters, events and IRL stuff, content, SEO, and free stuff. Lastly, PR. And I'm not going to bore you and tell you long stories. I will give you a lot of examples of what I did. So these tips will actually help you get in front of the right consumers. Do yourself a favor and actually take a pen and paper and write all this down because I don't want you to forget. And we all have limited attention span. So I want you to take a pen and paper, write everything down because there's going to be a lot of good tips in this video from all my mistakes. I don't want you to make the same mistakes. So number one, we're going to talk about email marketing. We we will divide every launch of a software of a product into pre-launch and post-launch marketing. And pre-launch is all about creating that initial buzz around your product. You know, the day of your launch, they're not like crickets and you're just looking at your co-founder like nothing's happening. But trust me, like because this has happened to me before and it's quite painful. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an email list of all the people close to you, all the people you've interacted with over the last three years. If you don't have their email, you can even make a text message list. And these are all the people you've acquainted with. Harmozi has a whole segment on this, so I'm not going to go deep into it, but you're going to create this list and then we will prepare to send these people messages about your launch and how much work you've put in. You want to get your early supporters to come out and like help you. And this goes for software if you're launching on Product Hunt or this goes for hardware if you're launching on Kickstarter or Indiegogo. And if you have a regular e-commerce product, what you want to do is create a landing page on Shopify and build a waiting list to actually pique people's interest and validate demand for the product. So remember, no matter what you do, be always conscious about building that email list because you can consistently use that email list as long as people don't ask you to unsubscribe because sometimes you bug people too much. I have a cadence of sending one or two emails a week. I don't send more than that because I feel like that annoys people. So just send one or two emails a week and create an email nurture sequence of paid users and free users. I will make a whole separate video on that because it's a whole topic I can talk about 10 minutes for that and trust me it will feel like you're being too pushy to the people close to you but if they believe in you they will support you this is something when you're starting a business people actually like face a lot that imposter syndrome but get over it because people want to be sold to especially if you have a good product they want to buy they want to help they want to support they want to be part of something also you will be having your own newsletter at one point so I have my own personal newsletter on Beehive which is the best platform for having a newsletter and you can have your company newsletter on MailChimp, Clevio, or whatever you want. Here is an example of a newsletter we sent out for InMagic. Secondly, the key engine we used in my businesses to grow is influencers especially YouTubers and short form creators. When you're starting out, it's really important to convince a really niche influencer to mention you. And I go with the strategy of going slowly up. So for example, for In Magic, we decided to work with micro influencers. We're offering them a base rate. And then on top of that, we give them free access to our product. And then on top of that, we give them an affiliate deal. It works out and creates this win-win situation for all of us because everyone's incentives are aligned equally. And the best strategy to reach out to influencers is not DMs. You always want to email them. There is a way to find their email. Usually go through on your YouTube or you find their personal website and you find their email and you send them an email. If they don't respond, you send a second email. If they don't respond, send a third email. But be cordial about it. You know, like really be clear what you want. Don't waste their time. These people's time is very precious. So you want to like keep your email short and to the point. What are you offering? What are your content guidelines? Things like that. And that's why I always get a 
response because I'm very clear. In terms of payment, I always suggest a base rate plus like referral marketing works the best because these people, obviously they want to be clear that they're not wasting their time. They have an hourly rate that they're accustomed to. So you just don't want to um, undercut anyone, but you also want to make sure it's worth your time, but you're not like overexposed to spending way too much. So initially I would suggest focus on 5k to 100k influencers in that range. If you're good at convincing, you can even talk to a lot of influencers. If they love your product, you can give them a free product. And if they like you uh, and they get on a call with you, they might even promote it for free, but it's always good to communicate with them what you're going through. In Makai India, I personally followed up with people like maximum like seven times. So don't be afraid of keep following up. If you don't get a response after your first email, please do a little bit of work and send that second email because everyone's busy. Like you can't expect results to come out from your first email and secondly we talked about the video creators but you also should find out influencers on twitter and medium these are the people who write blogs and twitter threads and you also want to talk to these people as well because they can write a thread about you like this person wrote a thread about five websites that feel illegal to know and they put in magic.ai and we got so many users from that particular campaign so i would really suggest you guys to hit all kinds of verticals and test which one's working for you there is a way to set up and I will talk about that in the next vertical of how to set up those users. Number fourth is as I would not suggest run ads if you have a limited budget because for ads, you need to spend a lot of money. You need to be spending like five, ten thousand a month minimum to see any kind of results. I feel like if you have a low budget of spending less than thousand a month or something like that, or less than two thousand, it's not going to give you crazy results. You need to also understand Google ads versus Facebook ads. I think the most important thing about the ads is you need to set up UTM links so that you track all the ads. And for ads, I would suggest not like willy nilly being like, oh, I'm just going to do it. By myself actually hiring an agency who's an expert at this who will guide you into what kind of creatives you should make and things like that and even like setting up a target demographic is gold you shouldn't try to do it yourself because you're not going to see results and you're probably going to quit ads so as i feel like you should do it if you have a higher budget there are many other things that you can try before the ad number five is talk to users and word of mouth if you're a startup founder literally first thing you should do every morning is email your customers their feedback is like gold. You should be totally focused on what's working and what's not working. Usually I always ask like, hey, what feature did you like? What feature are you using? Like, what would you want us to build next? You're kind of like predicting demand for the masses by talking to a few users. So these are going to be your power users. And also remember, word of mouth is the best way to grow anything. So if you can make your power users to talk about your product to other people, there is a lot of power in that. And those are the organic ways of growing that I I always look for. I really believe in like building a relationship with your customers. Like if you're mindful and respectful and talking to these customers about, hey, I really need help to improve my product. Like they hear you, they, they respond. And you can send them a Calendly link and usually, most of them are usually busy, but if they have time, you can offer them something in return, like an Amazon gift card or, or like a free access to your product in return. But initial months, I think those feedback is gonna be really important until you find that product market fit. Next, we're gonna list our product on tool discovery platforms or software marketplaces. If you have a software, you can list it on AppSumo. If you have an AI tool, you can list it on futuretools.io because they get a lot of organic users to their website. So it'll bring that free traffic to you. I actually worked with a few Shopify stores and all I did was I took their product and I put it on wholesale marketplaces like Fair, Tundra. And I remember our revenue would go from like 300K to like 1.5 million within like six months to a year because when you go to the these marketplaces, it all comes down to like a pricing competition. For example, on AppSumo, you're gi giving lifetime access for your product at a very good discount. That's why you can get a lot of users like that fees. Again, you have to do that cost benefit analysis if it's actually worth doing that. But if you have a product that's in that 20 to $40 price range, it becomes like a very low impulse kind of product for people to purchase. And it really works. Looking to these marketplaces, we actually got a lot of traffic from futuretools.io. Shout out. Thank you for them and we listed it for free so we didn't have to pay them for anything but before we move forward this episode of emerging tech is brought to you by in magic ai in magic is not a sponsor but it's a company i co-founded to help creators become more productive if you have an instagram account you're going to love in magic.ai trust me on this we have thousands of users in our community and we would love to welcome you there as well please check out in magic.ai back to the episode number seven 
7, we have podcasts and newsletters. People who subscribe to podcasts and read like newsletters are very intimate readers or intimate listeners. So they're much more engaged users than your average TikTok follower or Instagram follower. I would suggest trying newsletters and podcasts, but I always notice one thing that you need to do more than one uh, promotion or one mention in the podcast. It needs to be more like a few deals because it takes time to build that awareness. This is a popular option for, I would say, companies but people have a higher budget to actually sponsor the podcast for that season or do like three or four mentions in that newsletter to actually see some results. If you want to see results of one-off, then it's not going to be the thing. I feel like for that, you should try more influencer stuff. That's just my opinion. Number eight is events and IRL. I love this because I actually like going outside. I did a lot of events for my previous venture capital job and I threw this event for 600 people called Global Capital Summit. And one of the key ways we were selling the tickets to our event was we were selling like actually these tables for startups to present their companies to investors by this event. So we invited a lot of big investors to this event and we were able to charge startups money. And I was the person in charge of like selling that those tables. So it was a very interesting learning experience for me. I think events are very powerful because you can actually spread a message and like get a lot of people in the same room, entertain them, tell them what you're building. It's a great way to grow. I think events are underrated. More people need to throw more events because I feel like niche specific events are like, you know, people root for those e-commerce specific, AI specific, marketing specific. People need those events. And if you have an e-commerce product like a supplement company, I would always suggest you hand out like free samples to people near the mall or at the gym because you always want to give people a taste of what you're selling. Also, if you look into buying billboards, uh, I know the billboards are underrated, but if you have a very like broad message, billboards is the way to go. Number nine is content. I would suggest publishing a viral piece of content. I mean, the famous example is Dollar Shave Club. Like they just went bananas. And I feel like for that, you need to hire like a marketing agency who's really good at like making those kind of videos. For me, I still haven't fought, made one viral video like Dollar Shave Club, but I like tell myself every day I'm going to do that. And I will. This is like my dream to like make a video like that that would go like crazy. But yeah, there's a power in making viral pieces of content. Like I don't know if you guys saw with the Stanley Cup, like the car got in the fire and the only thing that was left remaining that didn't burn was this cup. There was a power in that piece of content and Stanley was really good to respond to that and actually offer a free car to that person and that whole created this like viral bonanza of like whoa like Stanley's in like you know uh, Stanley was everywhere in the media every TikTok was about Stanley Cup so you really need to like catch lightning in the bottle with that virality it's not easy like people like Mr. Beast or like Iraq they know how to do that but for regular people like us, it's not that easy to build like a viral piece of content. Number 10, we have SEO. So utilizing search oriented content as a natural extension of your product experience. SEO is basically this black box of finding users through Google search or finding people through like search engine optimization. That's what it's called. And I have a friend, his name is Nico. He actually started this blog called Failery and he used programmatic SEO to create these pages of whenever you search like top venture capital companies in India or top venture capital companies UK, his list would show up and these lists help him drive traffic to his blog. Now he has like a lot of like half a million people coming to his website. There is a power in SEO. Again, it's more of a long term thing. It takes about six months to a year to build it out. Most people quit. That's what I'm noticing. Like with all these marketing verticals, people quit really fast. So you need to kind of like wait it out and like see what's working, see what's not working. And SEO is something like you need to be careful. You need to be mindful about it. You need to write good quality content. Like I used to hire a lot of people internationally to write content and I noticed like the content quality was kind of poor so I'm currently hiring a few people locally in, in America who understand the social media marketing space to write blogs about in magic.ai because there is a power in organic users like if you can find a way to get organic users it's better than anything in my opinion like I recently got my headshots done and I was talking to the guy and he said he bought the domain headshotsla.com and everyone in LA is searching headshots in LA and his link shows up so there is a power in buying those keywords, having a good domain, having well-written blogs, having well-written tutorials, things like that. They have a lot of power in them and you just need to know how to use it. And AI is completely disrupting that space. So I'm going to make a whole video of how AI is disrupting SEO. Next, we're going to look into offering free stuff to our audience, to our new users, like tutorials, PDFs, need magnets. These are usually called sidecar products. This is like creating free products that are related to the main 
amazing product to actually attract like high intent users. And I always think about it, like, you know, when you give people something for free, there's a power in this. And I noticed like uh, shops do this. They give you free water and then you think like, oh, I need to buy something in return. But it's just a marketing tactic of giving people free stuff because people love free stuff. I've noticed this at conferences, like people are always like putting stuff in this bag that they're pro probably going to never use and throw away, but they love like accumulating, which I'm not a big fan of, but it works. Giving people free stuff works. Number 12, we have PR. So this is like orchestrating a PR stunt. There's a company called PRnews.io. Their rates are very uh, nominal. PR is another industry that's like a more of a relationship industry where you have to know the editors, you have to know the contributors and the writers. There is a great book on PR. It's called Trust Me, I'm Lying by Ryan Holiday. And he talks more in detail about like how he used PR to grow this brand called American Apparel. So read that book, goes deep into PR. I've just done a few press releases for myself. Doesn't usually do something so i have not really used pr personally so i cannot say a lot but pr is again something of a necessary evil because whenever people search for you those blogs will come and it actually legitimizes you and people are like oh is this company legit or not they'll see those blogs it legitimizes you so i try to put a lot of information in this video in very short amount of time but if you really want to talk more with me about one particular topic in more detail i'll put my calendar link in the bottom where we can discuss and like go on a call and i can help you guide with your product because to be honest Honest, like there's a lot of information I could talk for hours and hours about this but I don't really want to bore you guys so this is it for the growth marketing class I'll see you in the next video